Warning! The following broadcast contains both strong and graphic language, which may be offensive to some listeners. Strong words such as love, faith, victory, and the name of Jesus may be used. This broadcast will graphically magnify the integrity of God's Word and the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan will be ridiculed, spoken of disrespectfully and shown to be a defeated foe, which may make some listeners uncomfortable. Pastor Glenn's messages may not be suitable for stuffy believers. Therefore, listener discretion is advised. Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. God is with you. God is for you. God is your defense. You can't go under for going over. God's making a way for you in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. He's flattening the hills and the mountains for you, filling in the valleys so that you can walk on an even place as you walk in the Spirit by walking in the Word of God. Praise God. I'm Pastor Glenn. It's Miracle Monday. Maybe I already said that. Let me read two scripture cards to you. And then we get energized on the word of God. All right. Proverbs 19, 17. I'm reading from the prosperity scripture cards. He that has pity on the poor lends to the Lord and that which he has given, the Lord will pay him again. Yes. Uh, with increase, I might add Genesis 13, two, and then well, Genesis 13, two, and Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and and in gold. Now, I want you to read Romans 4 and Galatians 3 to show you, to prove to you that you are hooked up by divine birth from the Lord Jesus Christ to have Abraham's blessing on your life. Proverbs 13, 22, the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the righteous. 2 Corinthians 9, 10 in ways translation. Wow, let's hear what that says. And God, who supplies seed for the sower, yes, and bread for eating, yes, will supply you, the idea in that context is financial seed and multiply it and will increase the benefits wrought by your alms giving. Williams translation says, enlarge the harvest which your deeds of charity yield. And Acts 10.34 says, God is no respecter of persons. What he did for other people, he's going to do for you. Let me give you a word of wisdom. Success is a matter of luck. Ask any failure. Seems like I already read that one to you. All right. So a few uh, weeks ago, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, I kind of started talking about the pre-Adamics. And I didn't intend to do that. That would be October 7th or or the week of October 7th or the week of October 14th. People tell me, Pastor Glenn, why don't you talk about the dinosaurs and was there cavemen? And the Bible says that when Satan fell, he corrupted the cities of the world. There were no cities in the Garden of Eden. Tell us about that and how how, uh, Genesis 1-2 is the recreation of the, the earth by the Holy Spirit. And so that kind of stuff is interesting. And it's pretty important that you understand it because a lot of people in our days, uh, you know, they they talk about we have evolved from uh, the fish or birds or animals or cavemen or whatever. But no, the, the Genesis account is the account of creatures made in God's image. And it's really important that you know that. Okay. And so I don't want to go over what I've already done shared. But let me just uh, recap a tiny bit, okay? Adam's responsibilities were to have dominion, demonstrate lordship on this earth, and yield to no one on this earth except God. His responsibilities included subduing the earth um, from Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Subdue means make it yield to your authority, make it yield to your lordship. This would include confining Satan and the fallen angels to, to hell, which God created for them in the bowels of the earth or in the Euphrates River, which contains some of the evil principalities now, according to Matthew twenty-five forty-one and the Revelation nine fourteen, And then keep the garden. And keep means two things. It means to guard the garden, but it also means to protect the garden from all intruders and rebellion 
uh, and rebels. So God was telling Adam and Eve, there's a force on the earth that's contrary to me and contrary to you. And so I give you authority to deal with that. Guard your garden. And the fourth thing, which we saw last week or the week before, was replenish the earth. And that means bring it back to a livable (laughs) habitation, okay? Expand the borders of your garden through your offspring until every wicked spirit is subdued and incarcerated and the land mass of the earth is an extension of the Garden of Eden. And so, wow, they had some amazing authority. God commanded Adam to do and to have everything that Lucifer himself wanted to do and have. Man was, you could say, the God of this world in that sense, not the big G, but the little G. And he was, in a sense, the prince and the power of the air because he had dominion over everything that creeps, everything that's on the earth, everything that flies, the fish of the sea. So Adam was the God of this world and the prince and the power of the air. He was the absolute ruler of planet earth. Now, Man possessed the titles that are now attributed to Satan. You know, Ephesians 2.2 2 says uh, that Satan is the prince and the power of the air. And you know that Jesus called Satan the prince of this world either two or three times. I think it was three times. And in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, this punch in the stomach to me is that Satan is called the god of this world. Now, that explains why crazy things happen. Why sickness and disease and stuff like that. For so long in heaven, Lucifer wanted to be like God. Actually, he wanted to be God, really. Uh, Now God creates a man who's just like God, and Satan was furious. Adam had what Satan wanted. Lucifer wanted to be majestic and respected. Now here was man full of dignity and majesty and respected. Lucifer wanted to be worshipped. And now here was man worthy of the highest honor, not as high as God, but the highest of anything on planet Earth for sure, right? Lucifer wanted his own kingdom where every creature would submit to him. And now here he is, maybe in the bushes, uh, watching as God is doing something on planet Earth with this creature, this gumby creature that he breathed into the nostrils of. And be, the, a, Adam jumped up and go, whoa, what is that, God? What is that? Well, that's my life in you. Protect it, man. Anyway, and now here's man and, and all things on Earth have to submit to him. Lucifer wanted power in his words like God. God said, let there be light, and there was light. That's what Adam wanted, and now that's what Satan wanted, and Adam got it, and now God, Jesus is telling you there's power in your words. He said in Mark 11, 23, 24, you'll have what you say. That's pretty amazing, right? Good or bad, positive or negative, a blessing or a curse, you're going to have what you say. That's why you got to guard your tongue, man. Set a set a watch on your tongue. Instead of put a guard on your tongue. Now here's man ruling the earth with words. Lucifer wanted authority and dominion, and now man had that authority and dominion. In Psalm 8, verse 6, it says, God has given man dominion over the works of his hands and put all things under his feet. Now that's the original man, Adam. But Jesus came to get, get that authority back from the devil. Lucifer wanted to be creative, and now man had the creative power of God in him. Man was all and had all that Satan ever wanted, ever hoped for, ever wanted to be, and he got kicked out of heaven for coming against God to try to get those things. So here we see man, Adam and Eve, before the fall, created in the very image and likeness of God. Man was clothed with light as God is. And he did not know that he was naked. He had light as a covering of it as his clothes. And I say that because it doesn't say that in Genesis, but Psalm 104, 2 says God clothes himself in light and he made man in his image. And after he sinned, he lost his light covering and knew he was naked. And when God found him uh, in the garden hiding, God said, who told you you were naked? They were wearing fig leaves, I guess. (laughs) Anyway, 
He had the very nature of God. That was the purpose of the new birth, so that you could be have the nature of God in you. Adam was a God-class creature, and you're, today you're, God made you in Jesus Christ to be a God-class creature. You're not God. You're not all-knowing. You're not everywhere present equally. You're not all-powerful, but you're a God-class creature. That's the purpose of the new birth, not just to forgive you of your sins. That was huge. You could never be a God-class creature if your sins were a, 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 an obstacle in the way. But God dealt with that through Jesus on the cross and in hell. Praise God. Acts chapter 2. So, a God-class creature that could commune with God and fellowship with God and rule with God on God's level. That was God. That was a dream of God's heart for probably millions of years. All of creation would bow down to man and submit to the man, to Adam. This is what Satan wanted, and he had to figure out a way to obtain that limitless authority. I'm going to tell you about that. Failing in his first attempt to thwart God in heaven, the book of the Revelation 12, 7 through 9, Satan now saw a new and perhaps successful way to gain authority, gain control over God's creation and the earth. That, that would be a fulfillment of Satan's desire. So he had a twofold desire, gain absolutely, absolute authority, I'm going to say, over mankind, over the earth, and number two, punish God, hurt God's feelings, crush God, grieve God for punishing him. And wow, we're going to see later that God was grieved that he made man because man was so jacked up. Satan listened closely to the charge given to his newly to God's newly created man. God placed no limit to the scope of man's authority. He said, "All things that are created, I, I've given you authority over everything I created with my hands." Wow, we're going to discover. I think I uh, I don't know if I'm going to get to that, but that that includes other planets. When you go to heaven, you're not going to be playing baseball and shooting pool. Maybe some days you might, but you're going to have an assignment that even includes other star systems. I'm going to show you that from the Bible, praise God. In fact, God had even bigger plans for man. Maybe I uh, I don't have time. Listen, I'm out of time. I speak blessing and healing and prosperity and strength and power of my dominion to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen, go forth and steamroller the devil in Jesus' name with the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.